Hello everyone, and welcome back to our video tutorial series for Kingdom Hearts 1. In this video, we cover the battle at Linked Worlds. This fight includes 8 waves of Heartless that serve as a final test before reaching the last save station and what lies beyond it. Before we dive into combat, let's review how we can best prepare the party for this Heartless Barrage. If you haven't done so already, travel to the Hollow Bastion Library and speak with Era 3 times to receive Kuraga magic. This will let you recover the greatest amount of HP every time you cast Cure. It's recommended to have the party be at least level 50 for this fight, though you may find it more manageable at level 55 or 60. If you need a place to level up, it's a good idea to enter the Hades Cup with the entire party at the Olympus Coliseum. Clearing all 50 seeds of this tournament will give you lots of experience, and upgrades to your Blizzard, Thunder, and Gravity spells. Upgraded Arrow Magic will give you a massive advantage during this fight. You can gain Arrow Magic by defeating the opposite armor in Traverse Town, and you can earn spell upgrades by finding all 99 Dalmatian puppies and unsealing the Yellow Trinity in Neverland. Click the links in our video description or here in the video to see our guides for more info. Equip a keychain that boosts your magic and summoning power, and preferably one that boosts your strength as well. You can equip Oathkeeper for a decent magic and summoning boost, or Lady Luck for an even greater boost. You can obtain Lady Luck in Wonderland by traveling through the painting in the sideways bazaar room and unsealing the White Trinity there. Diamond Dust offers the greatest boost in magic and summoning power, but only has a small boost in strength. Unless your base strength stat is 35 or higher, I'd recommend sticking with Lady Luck or Oathkeeper. You can obtain Diamond Dust by defeating the Ice Titan in the Gold Match at Olympus Coliseum. Many of the attacks you'll see during these fights have a Dark or Thunder attribute, so equip accessories that boost your resistance to these elements. You can purchase Thundaga Rings, Thundagun Bands, and Chaos Rings from the accessory shop in Traverse Town. If you have another slot available, adding an Armlet accessory that boosts your MP and magic power is great too. You can synthesize them in the Moogle's Workshop in Traverse Town. For Sora's abilities, equip Guard, Dodge Roll, MP Haste, MP Rage, Second Chance, Leaf Bracer, and Cheer if you have them. Other abilities that are great to have equipped to Sora for this fight are Critical Plus, Hurricane Blast, Combo Master, Jackpot, and Treasure Magnet. Be sure to equip Goofy's MP Gift ability. He can use it to expend 2 of his MP and restore 3 MP for another party member. I prefer to unequip Goofy's combat abilities so that he can only use his MP to restore MP for other party members. If available, equip Goofy's Second Chance, Second Wind, MP Haste, MP Rage, and Cheer ability as well. Equip the same abilities to Donald as you did Goofy and equip Leaf Racer too. Don't forget to equip your newly acquired Super Glide in the Shared Ability menu. Enter the Customize menu and add Gravity, Arrow, and Cure Magic to your shortcuts. You can swap arrow with fire or stop magic if you want. We'll use these spells often for special strategies that we'll explain later on. And finally, enter the items menu and equip as many elixirs and mega elixirs as you can to Sora. You should also equip your other party members with curative items too. I like to equip mega potions to Donald and mega ethers to Goofy. After making these menu changes, I recommend backtracking to the save station in the 100 acre wood area of World Terminus to save your game. When you're ready, descend into the Volcanic Crater and jump into the final portal leading into Linked Worlds. The moment you drop down, dodge roll to the side to avoid the pouncing Arch Behemoth. Lock onto its horn and use gravity magic to quickly cut down its HP. You can speed things up by jumping in between each spellcast. If you set up your party members correctly, Goofy should be using MP Gift to replenish Sora's MP so you can keep casting gravity. When its HP reaches the yellow or green bar, jump up on its back and start striking its horn directly with complete combos. If it starts to build a glowing mass around its horn, drop down between its hind legs to avoid the dark orbs that shower the area. After taking enough damage to its horn, it will stagger and lower its head. Use this opportunity to deal two or three air combos, then super glide to the opposite end of the area to avoid the pillage of lightning. When the behemoth is defeated, there's a small window of time where you can open the start menu if you quickly reach the heartless sigil on the wall. When the command menu turns blue, that's your cue to open the menu. Take this opportunity to equip extra items to Donald and Goofy and use a cottage to fully heal your party. When you exit the menu, the first shard will fall from the heartless sigil and a large group of dark balls will appear. Dark balls can be really annoying in numbers, but if you set Sora's equipment to prioritize magic, you should be able to defeat each of them with two casts of Fyraga. 
Use your lock-on to quickly target the next closest dark ball and continue to use fire magic to clear them out. If you choose to use this method, you may find it easier to add Fyraga to your magic shortcuts for quicker casting. You can also summon Mushu and use his Fire Breath command, but this can be risky because Fire Breath will always get interrupted if you take damage. The one advantage to using Mushu over Fire Magic is that you can run and dodge roll while using Fire Breath, so keep moving in order to keep your distance while locked onto the nearest Dark Ball, and keep an eye on those that teleport towards you. I recommend super gliding near the Heartless Sigil immediately after defeating the Arch Behemoth. This will give you the most distance between you and the group of Dark Balls when they start to appear. Before you defeat the last Dark Ball, keep it alive for a moment and take this opportunity to cast Arrow Magic on Sora and restore your party's HP and MP if needed. Arrow Magic will increase your defense, and if the spell is level 2 or higher, it will often stagger enemies when they're close to you, which will be extremely helpful against upcoming Heartless. Do your best to bait the last Dark Ball towards the Heartless Sigil on the wall, then take it out with Fire Magic. The next wave is a group of Invisibles, one of the most aggressive and heavy-hitting Heartless you'll ever encounter. They have a lot of HP, and their first instinct is usually to close in on Sora and attack with their swords. We're going to use that to our advantage by baiting them into a group and casting Gravity Magic on them. When you defeat the last Dark Ball from the previous wave, Super Glide to the Heartless Sigil and face the Invisibles. Jump and cast Gravity Magic in front of you without locking onto an enemy. Doing this three or four times should drastically cut the HP of most Invisibles in range. After they're hit with Gravity once or twice, it should only take two or three hits to take them out. Invisibles can be staggered with air combos in between their attacks, and you can keep them staggered this way as long as you strike them quickly. Having Arrow Magic active should help lower the amount of damage you take, and it will stagger the Invisibles when they get close to you. Whenever they flip their sword and strike it into the ground, a dark ring will surround Sora or another party member. After a few seconds, the ring will collapse inwards and damage its target, but you can avoid this by dodge rolling or jumping just as the ring starts closing in. When the ring disappears, close in on that invisible and get ready to strike with an air combo or gravity. The next wave is a group of angel stars. These Heartless have very high magic defense and are immune to thunder magic. Unlike Invisibles, they tend to keep their distance and attack the party with homing projectiles. When an Angel Star glows pink, it's about to send out a tornado that tracks you and deals heavy damage. It's difficult to outrun the tornado, but you can get away from it more easily with Super Glide. When an Angel Star glows blue, it begins building a large energy orb. This is a great opportunity to land several air combos. If you stand directly under it, you can avoid the orb when it's fired. And when it glows yellow, it will shoot smaller orbs while targeting a party member. You can send these back with a well-timed guard to deal damage and daze them. And if you have a Rogue Magic active, it will automatically deflect these shots. After taking a few combos, Angel Stars like to pull in their wings and become invincible for a short time. It's not wise to wait for it to open its wings because other Heartless will try to attack you from behind. It's best to change your target and attack another enemy instead. Gravity Magic can be used to cut their HP down, but the resistance to it is higher than Invisibles, so it might take two or three casts to remove most of their health. The remaining waves are a mix of Dark Balls, Angel Stars, and Invisibles. Here are several tips to keep in mind as you progress through each wave. Try to focus your attacks on one enemy at a time to keep them staggered. Constantly switching targets will have you spending more time on defense rather than offense. And try to focus on enemies near the walls, Keeping to the walls will help reduce the number of sides you'll take attacks from, and it forces enemies to group together, giving you a great opportunity to hit many of them at once with gravity magic. But do be mindful of the portal leading back to the previous area. Jumping into it will reset these fights to the beginning, so steer clear of it. Whenever you're not attacking, always stay on the move. Dark Balls and Invisibles love to charge toward you, so keep moving when you're trying to summon or use items. It's a good idea to dodge roll after defeating enemies so you can avoid incoming attacks from the sides and behind you. And keep an eye on your HP and MP as you're attacking. Use an item if you see your MP drop below two bars. As long as no other summon is active, you can summon Tinkerbell to cast Regen on the party, and she'll also provide a one-time save from KO before disappearing. You can maximize the damage that Gravity Magic deals by combining it with Stop Magic. This exploit works especially well at the beginning of each wave when the Heartless are near each other. Gravity Magic deals damage based on a percentage of the enemy's current HP, 
but when an enemy is frozen with stop magic, its HP is frozen too, allowing you to cut even more of their health with gravity while the enemy is stopped. With a build that prioritizes magic, you can summon Simba and use his proud roar attack at maximum power to clear out entire waves of Heartless. This strategy requires very specific timing to work. If you start charging Simba's proud roar attack and take enemy damage in the process, it'll clear the gauge and you'll have to start charging it up again. The only time where it's safe to charge proud roar at maximum power is while the next enemy wave is spawning. For best results, summon Simba immediately after defeating the first wave of invisibles. With good timing, you'll be able to fully charge Proud Roar while the next wave spawns. And with a large enough charge gauge, you can repeat this process to clear out the remaining waves. You can expand the charge gauge by equipping the cheer ability to all three party members. Let's wrap up with the key takeaways. Remember that magic and summons are your best allies in this fight. Keep your arrow magic active as often as you can for increased defense. Remember to stay focused and keep an eye out for attacks from all sides. Use gravity magic to quickly cut the HP of invisibles and angel stars. And keep an eye on your MP so you have enough to use cure and summons. With these tips and tricks, you'll see yourself to the other side of final rest and into the end game. And that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any advice or tips of your own, share them with us in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more content. And as always, you can find the best online walkthrough and guides to the Kingdom Hearts series at khguides.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.